welcome back to another video today we're going to be going over something that's pretty important that has been requested a couple of times uh, and that is how to save and get data in your ios app so for example if the user enters in some text and we want to get it uh, and display it back to the user when they come back to our app uh, very very common functionalities you can imagine uh, so we're going to walk through that and talk about some best practices and how i personally like to do it and how i recommend you should do it uh, so with that being said, let's uh, fire up Xcode. Uh, and first and foremost, if you could be so kind as to hit that like button, it definitely helps out the video uh, and it really helps me create more of these videos for you all. Uh, so we're gonna choose a single V application. We're gonna make sure we have Swift and Storyboard down here. Uh, call it whatever you'd like. I'll just call it test. Save it wherever you wanna save it. In this case, the desktop. And give it a second. Cool. So let's uh, let's go ahead and close this, drag this up here, give ourselves some room to work, and let's run this application into any simulator, which we'll see we'll have a white screen in just a second here. But every time you run it, obviously this will already be open for us, so it'll make our lives a little faster. Cool. So when we want to save something, we need to save it into a location, obviously. So there's a couple of solutions that Apple provides and also some third parties in terms of saving data. And um, in this video in particular, we're going to be working with one of the simpler ones, which is called user defaults. Uh, and it's built into iOS. It's built into the framework. You don't have to include any library. Um, but for this demo, actually, what we're going to do is, like I mentioned, we're going to put a text field here, and we're also going to put a label here. And what we're going to do is when the user enters uh, something into the text field and hits the enter key or the return key, we'll save it, and then we'll close the app and reopen it, and we'll see that the label uh, shows the text that was previously saved if there was anything um, saved. So obviously, in the first time we open the app, there will be nothing there. So before we actually talk about the saving, let's go ahead and put a uh, text field and a label here in our storyboard and link that up with a IB outlet. So let's go ahead and make the background color something not white because it's not as fun. So let's go with this blue and let's go and take a UI text field, drag it on here. Uh, and if you're not familiar with kind of dragging these user interface elements on here, leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to point you into, into the direction of a video that I've done to explain this. Uh, let's add some constraints to this. So let's do 20 from the top, 20, 20. And let's also give it a height of 52, um, which should be good enough. Uh, and then right below it, we're going to add a label which is where we're going to actually display the text. So let's put that right there. Again, we want to add some constraints. So let's do 20, 20, 20, 20 from the bottom. So it'll be a big label. And let's go in here and center our text. And we're going to do one line, which means the text in our label will wrap onto unlimited lines uh, as it needs to fill up uh, to make sure the text isn't truncated with like the dot, dot, dot. That you'll see in some apps. Uh, with that being done, this is all good to go. We're going to go to our view controller and create two outlets, one for the label and one for the text field. So we're going to do this view controller. We're going to create two IB outlets and one is going to be a label and we're going to just copy and paste this really fast and one is going to be, it's called a text field. So this is just kind of like the setup for our example. So no, no data being saved yet. So bear with me two seconds while we get this situated. So we're going to right click on this and we'll drag from the field to the field and we'll drag from the label to the label, which is this whole thing. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do to actually set this up is once the user presses enter on the keyboard, when they're typing in the field, we want to save uh, the data. So uh, ignoring the saving part, we want to get that event when the person taps the return key. And the way we're going to do that is through a delegate function on the field. 
if you're not familiar with the delegate uh, notion, that's okay. It's irrelevant for this video, but you can just follow along. So we're going to say the delegate for this field is self. And what we're going to add to this up here is UI text field delegate. And the function we're interested in is should return. And this returns a bool, so we can say return true. So basically, once the person presses the enter key on the keyboard when they're typing uh, in the field, basically we're going to come to this function and we're going to do stuff in here. So let's run this app with command R and we'll see we have our blue interface um, along with this text field up here and this label, which just says label right now is the initial text. Cool. So let's talk about actually saving data. So like I mentioned, we're going to be working with user defaults. User defaults is more or less a dictionary. Um, so you can think of it as you can save things with a key and the actual thing you save is the value for that key. So for example, if we want to save um, a high score, maybe we make the key a score and what we're saving into it is a string of the actual value. So let's say 100. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is actually something a little more in tune with our example that we've painted out uh, with the interface. So we're going to save a person's name and it's going to be something like John, for example. So whatever the user types into the field is what we'll save. So the way we do this is very, very simple. So first and foremost, we need to create an instance of our user defaults. So let's call this user defaults. Um, to make it a little more obvious what it is. And it's an instance of this user default class. So like that. To save something, it's actually very, very simple. We're just gonna, on this, on this instance, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say set value for key. So you can notice there's a couple in here. So let's go through these. So you can notice we can set a value, some um, which is any, and the key is always a string. We can also do things like set a bool. Sorry, one second. Let's see. Ah, I see. So what we can do is, so they've recently changed this in Swift 5 actually. In the actual value, because it doesn't have to be a string, we see it's any optional. We can set um, an integer, we can set, a, set an object, we can set a Boolean, so like true or false. More or less, you can set uh, pretty much anything. We can see down here, we can set um, numbers and other things as well. So the notion of user default is more or less to save smaller bits of information. So if you think of something like a larger app, like the Instagram app or the Facebook app, where we would want to maybe save like, the last few pictures that the person has seen or uh, something larger, user defaults isn't really the appropriate place for that. For something like that, we would use things like core data or a whole database on board like Realm that I'll probably do a follow-up video on. But it's important to understand the user default is very uh, lightweight and is meant to be used for simple tasks. So with that being said, let's actually save um, Let's actually save a value in here. Whoops. So we're going to set. We want value for key. Let's make the key name. And now we want to actually save the information that's in the field that the person has typed in. So we're just going to say field dot text. And that's basically all there is to it. Once a person presses the enter key, uh, we will save basically the, uh, the, the contents of the field. Um, so let's just run the app, make sure that's good to go. Now we won't really know that the information that we've typed in here has been saved because we're not giving any feedback to the user. But what we can do, or what we should do, is let's actually dismiss the keyboard once we press the enter key, which I'm doing on my physical computer keyboard. So let's do... resign first responder on the field, which basically tells the system to re return the keyboard, basically more or less dismissing it. Let's type in, um, let's type in Jason. 
Cool. So we know something's going on. We're coming into this function and it is dismissing. So now what we want to do is every time that this view controller loads, let's go ahead and check if a value exists for this key. And if it does, let's update the label to have its text. So what we can do is we can do similar to set value for key. What we can do here is we can say user defaults dot value for key. Like so. Um, and we can actually even make this simpler and say the labels text is going to be the value for uh, this key. So actually, so this is giving us an error and I should probably explain why this is an error, what we need to do to fix it. Because um, we can set any type of object as the value for the key, Swift doesn't know that this is per se gonna be a string. We know it because we've set it here, but we need to unwrap this because it could be an optional and it could come back as a number or anything. And the labels text has to be a string. And what we can do in here now is this equals value. So what we've essentially said here is if there is, if there's a thing in here, if there is a value for key, we're going to put it in value and we want it back as a string. And we're going to do ask question mark, which basically says, try to get this thing, the value um, at this key as a string. And if we get it, it'll be stored into this value property. And we're going to say the labels text is now value. So if you run this, we'll see whatever the last uh, thing was that I typed in, which was JSON, which we see right there. So let's do this one more time. So let's type in, I don't know, let's type in David. Press enter and let's um, close this and reopen it and we'll see we have David. So that's a very, very simple example of saving um, data and kind of fetching it again with user defaults. It's super simple, but what I want to go over is some good practices to use a user defaults. Um, and there's two in particular I want to cover. So because user defaults um, are for your entire application, uh, in other words, one app cannot have multiple places where data is stored. It's a good idea to initialize this object with a suite name. This object, sorry about that, user defaults with a suite name. And what this basically does is it provides a key to wherever this uh, data is being saved. In other words, a suite. And this is very similar to your bundle ID. So what people will often do, and what I recommend you do as is convention, is to give it uh, something similar to your bundle identifier for your app. If you're not familiar with bundle ID, please leave a comment and we can go over it. Um, so maybe something like that. So this can more or less be anything uh, at all, any string, but it's, a, it's always a good idea to provide a suite name. Um, if you're also creating things like an Apple Watch app and you want to share data across different apps, uh, different targets rather in one project, you can provide a suite name and that ensures that your data is being saved to the proper location. Um, and with that being said, the other thing that I wanted to mention very briefly in this video is it's often a good idea to have a separate standalone class that includes this user default object. So for the sake of this demo, what I'll do is I'll create another class down here and we'll call it, I, I like to call it personally UDM for user default manager, or you can spell it out, but we'll just call it UDM for the purposes of this video. Um, and the reason I do this is because you can, um, what you can do is, is create a variable in here, which is a static constant and call it shared and have this be equal to your user defaults instance and you can provide other functions in here 
to do various things. Like let's say you save user passwords in here, you save other things, um, whatever your app requires, you can create functions to get those things. So you don't have to do this like if let nonsense in various view controllers, uh, and you'll just get a proper uh, re return object back from here. But what this lets us do is in each class that we want to use this, uh, user default instead of creating a variable we can do um, this udm dot shared which is what we called it um, if I'm not mistaken yep we can do this udm dot shared but we need to create an instance of this actually so let's do So we can do udm dot shared dot defaults. Um, and the reason it's not picking it up is because it should be picking it up. Let's see. What's the error that we have over here? So the error that we have over here is static member defaults cannot be used. Okay, obviously. Uh, these both can't be statics. So this one actually needs to just be uh, constant. This is make sure that we're using this class as a singleton. Um, and I like to keep these little debug moments in the video um, for the sake of um, kind of explaining my thought process along the way and showing you guys how these errors get made and being able to read the errors, understand it and fix it. So let's see what else um, override funk so we can get rid of this. That's also why it's complaining, which is good to go. And the other error here is value optional type user defaults. Okay. So what we can say down here is so create creating this with a sweet name returns an optional. So we can create um, this default is equaling user defaults with a bang at the end, which is a force unwrap. And then it looks like this is good to go. And lastly, we can update this over here and that's good to go. So let's actually review this because I rambled a little bit and had some errors along the way. So what we've essentially done is any view controller that wants to save uh, read and write data, what we can do is we can uses UDM shared defaults throughout our entire project, our entire uh, iOS app. And we don't have to worry about doing things like putting a property on every single view controller called user defaults. And it saves us boilerplate code. It saves us a lot of duplicate code and just makes our life easier. Um, so I also mentioned you could do things like moving this if let stuff into here. So we could make a function that is like get name and this could return a string. In other words, we can abstract a lot of functionality into this class and clean up this type of stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how you can save data. And this is giving an error because it wants a string to be returned. Um, but this is basically how you can save data in an iOS app through user defaults. It's very, very simple. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of uh, like trial and error of like what you need to save. And um, I remember when I first started doing iOS, it was something that I found very, very handy. It's a great learning tool. Um, it's important to understand that it's meant to save lightweight stuff, like maybe a couple strings, maybe a score in a game, uh, maybe like a true or false user setting if the user sets things like uh, preferences um, and things that you can control in the app, it's definitely not meant to save big chunks of user data. For that, we wanna use something like core data, Realm, um, SQLite. So I can definitely do a video on each of those and I probably will, to be honest. Um, and that's all I really had for you guys. If you enjoy the video, leave a like below, subscribe. Uh, if you're new, I do iOS, Swift, Objective-C videos uh, pretty consistently. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.